Southern African countries are facing serious drought, which is likely to damage harvests and have negative economic impacts from southern Angola to Botswana, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, and also Namibia. The impact is looking particularly serious for Zimbabwe, where the economy has been struggling for at least five years to recover from a recession that was marked by a billion percent hyperinflation, widespread food shortages as well. Now, governments and foreign agencies have expressed their concerns and are still assessing the needs of the millions that may soon require food aid. Now, joining us here in studio today is the United Nations World Food Program Communications Officer for Southern Africa, Mr. David Orr. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's a mouthful. The picture looks rather bleak. Is it as bleak as, as we see it here in Southern Africa? It is pretty bad. Um, people are talking about the worst situation in anywhere between the last six and ten years. Um, we're looking at significant food shortages, a looming food crisis over, over coming months, due basically to a bad harvest um, across the region. Now, here in South Africa, we've also been battling with our maize harvests. Uh, drought has, has, has really caused a lot of, uh, a lot of issues around... Uh, around uh, our, our green belt. What's the outlook for South Africa and how does that then tie into the rest of Southern Africa? I think in South Africa, um, as, as elsewhere in the region, we're looking at a reduced harvest of approximately um, a, quarter, a quarter down on, on last year, which was, which was very good generally in the region. Um, the situation in, in places like Zimbabwe, which you mentioned in your introduction, is actually even more serious. Um, but the average is about between a quarter and a third down on, on last year's harvest. The impact of record highs, drawn out dry seasons, is it, is it a scenario around climate change and the, the warming of the, of the Indian Ocean that's having this devastating effect on Southern Africa? Well, I think most experts are, are linking it to climate change. We have, certainly in the last two decades, I would say, in southern Africa, seen um, some quite large extremes of extreme weather events, particularly drought and flooding. And it's, in fact, what we, we've experienced um, since the end of last year, very uh, poor, uh, slow-onset rains in December across the region, drought, dry spells continuing right on through um, January and February, in some areas, extreme, uh, very heavy rains like Malawi, Mozambique, um, which caused massive flooding uh, in those areas. And it wasn't actually until March that the, the rains came, but then it was sort of too little, too late, really, for the, particularly for the maize mm. harvest. So the, the, it wasn't just drought, it was kind of extremes. You had uh, dry spells in, in many areas and then extreme uh, flooding in others. How can these affected nations adapt to these climate changing conditions in order to, to still be able to feed the populations of each country? Well, that's something that everyone is looking at. Governments, uh, humanitarian organizations, the World Food Program included, our partners. We're, we're looking at how we can make people, basically ordinary communities, more resilient to extreme weather and um, so that given that these, uh, these sort of conditions are becoming increasingly frequent across the region, mm -hmm. how do you help people cope um, when, when, they do, when they do strike? Um, and that's, that's the big question really. Um, and it can be everything from you know, helping people um, build uh, irrigation channels, yeah. dams, water harvesting features, all those sort of things, so that uh, they're a little, bit, a, bit, a little bit better prepared. Now, now we've seen what kind of issues we've had here in South Africa with migration, uh, people coming for, for a better life for that matter. Do you see climate change, do you see drought and the like forcing uh, Southern Africa to deal with a new wave of of migration and refugee patterns? I think yes. I mean, climate change I mean, worldwide has been linked to everything from you know, conflict to uh, growing urbanization. 
Um, and certainly in southern Africa, people are moving into the cities. You've got huge um, population in this region, which is, which is pretty food insecure. And that's really the, the problem. When you've got so many people, maybe half the regional population living on less than $1 a day, high levels of undernutrition, um, then people are much more susceptible to, to hunger. And when, when um, extreme weather does strike, when tro crops dry up, mm. harvests fail, that's the real problem. You've got this underlying uh, food insecurity anyway with very uh, vulnerable populations. Now, the situation is bad as it is at the moment. Is there a risk, and what is that risk, that the situation across southern and in the rest of the African continent can get a lot worse? Um, well, <laughs> will it get worse? We've just, we're just over the harvest period now. What I think is going to happen, usually you've got the lean season, which starts in November and runs up until um, March. That's when traditionally people's food stocks become depleted in that, in that period before, before the harvest, the, the following year's harvest. We're going to see the lean season in some countries like Zimbabwe, Malawi, starting a lot earlier, maybe as early as from September. So, yeah. so you will have these um, rural populations which are a bit in food insecure in many uh, parts of the region anyway, um, having to uh, really, you know, uh, facing, facing problems with their food supply earlier than in previous years. Well, thank you for joining us today and alerting us to this escalating problem throughout Southern Africa. That is uh, uh, the Communications Officer for Southern Africa, David Orr, with the United Nations World Food Program. We're talking about food insecurity, drought, and the hard effects uh, all of us here in Southern Africa. But let's move on and have a look at your tweets.